All right, so uh, last time we got our object classes set up for getting the data from the Elasticsearch server, and we also kind of ex experimented with some queries. So now we're ready to actually set up our object classes so that they can retrieve the data from the Elasticsearch server. So how you start this is I usually start from the inside out. Uh, what I mean by that is the innermost object and then move to the outermost object. So the innermost object is this source object, the outermost object is this hits list, or this hits object here. So we have hits object, hits list, source object, and then we have the post object inside. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm inside post source, and the first thing I want to do uh, is put ignore extra properties, um, because if you don't put that, retrofit doesn't know that you want to ignore the extra properties that you see. So if there's anything extra, so like in the hits list, for, for example, we don't care about like all this stuff. We only care about the source object. So if you hit ignore all, we ignore all that stuff. And so it's always important to do that. So next we can define our first object and that's going to be our post object. And then we just do uh, insert the constructor and we can do getter and setter method. And so above the post object, so this is also something you have to do to with the retrofit library. You have to do at expose and we need to do serialized name. Uh, we need to do serialized name because this, this references what the actual uh, text is that retrofit is looking for. So if we look at the, whoops, uh, the postman, the text it's looking for is this, underscore source. So that's what we need to put right here. And that will get our post object. So next we're going to our hits list class because uh, that's the next one. If we look at our postman, we have, we have source, then we have our hits list. So once again, we'll start by doing at, uh, at ignore extra properties, and then we'll define our first field, which is going to be a list, and it's going to be a list of post source objects. And then, so we'll just call it post index, and once again, we need to do at expose, and we need to do at serialize name, and reference what it is, it's hits. So if we check postman again, we see the text is hits. So that's what we're putting here. Then we do our constructor and get our insider methods. And there we go. And actually now that I realize that we don't need a constructor. We can get rid of the constructor, uh, go into the post source and also get rid of that constructor. All we need is the get our insider methods. So there we go. So there's our, our second class. Now let's go into our hits object class. And once again, we start by going ignore extra properties. And the field we need to look for is the hits list object and we go hits we'll call it and just do at expose and then we do at serialize name and we can do hits because that's what retrofit needs to look for and then we insert our getter and setter methods and that's it so there we go so now we have we have our source object we have our hits list and then we have our hits object and that should take care of everything we need to look for now we need to create the, um, the interface for retrofit. So we'll create a new Java class, uh, maybe in the utility package actually, and we'll change this to interface, and we're gonna call this Elastic Search API. And inside here is where we define our method uh, that we're gonna use to get the data from Elasticsearch. So we use at get because that's the uh, method that we're using, and then we do underscore search, uh, essentially what we're doing here is we're designing the URL that we're sending the request to and retrofit uses a call and we're going to pass our hits object because that's what it's going to be looking for is a hits object and we can call it search. We're just, this is where I'm defining the method name. I'm defining the method named search and now we need to attach a couple different fields here. The first one is a header map because in our, in our uh, get request we have headers. So we need to attach headers, and it's going to be a map of key value pairs of strings. So we just go string, string, uh, and I'll just call it headers. This name isn't important right here. It's just basically a placeholder. And then we do query uh, because we're making a query. And the first, the first part of that query is that default operator. Well, default operator, and that's going to be just string operator and then another comma and so if we look at postman 
remember because that first parameter after search so we have search and then the question mark and then the default operator so we need to append that next and then now we're going to be looking for the actual query itself so this is going to be customized basically but so this next part is going to be customized uh, before we actually send the request so once again we add query here and we're just going to attach queue and just do string query and that's it that's that's all we need to do to submit the request there's a bunch of code we still need to write like uh, building this query uh, there's still a lot of work to do because uh, it can be very different depending on what the user searches obviously depending on what their city is their province is uh, their country and then also the the string the search string that they want to look for so this Q value right here and I know some of you probably are confused about uh, this whole query thing and if we look at postman you're probably thinking how does the question mark get appended how does this and sign get appended uh, so I'll, I'll just explain that really quick so the way that the query works uh, with retrofit is the first query you use so like if I was to write comments this is the first query this is the second query the first query will automatically prepend a question mark to the URL for every query after it so if I have a second query or if I added another query after it it appends or it prepends an and symbol so I could say prepends a question mark and then down here I could say uh, prepends an and symbol so if we look at the uh, the the URL you can see that the first one pre will prepend a question mark and then every one after will re prepend an and symbol we only have one more after but if you were to add more parameters it would automatically prepend an and symbol so hopefully that explains things um, like I said before I have tutorials video tutorials on my YouTube channel on retrofit on the retrofit library so check those out if you need a little bit more information also my course uh, on the reddit the reddit app the one where we build a reddit app we use the retrofit library for that too so you get a ton more information if you check that course out it's free also on my youtube channel so like literally if you need more help just go to my channel type this little search thing here and just type retrofit and i bet you'll get a bunch of hits so here we go we have a bunch of videos here we have post requests get requests we have the reddit app so all these videos will be helpful if you need more information okay so now we're ready to actually build the query so we can close all of these uh, classes and we're going to go into not post fragment we need to go into search fragment and this is where we're going to construct our query um, this is actually not a bad place to stop though maybe maybe I'll just do a little bit of setup here so uh, let's set up some of our widgets so private edit text edit text uh, m search text and go down here m search text equals edit text view find view by the r to id dot uh, what is it called input search so this is the search text that's actually in that up in the top in the bar that's this edit text field here and so let's attach an on click listener to this or not an on click listener um, I'm going to override the return button in the keyboard so so the user won't actually the user can just press the return button on the keyboard if they want to actually initiate a search so I can do search text dot set on editor action listener and then we can do a new on editor action listener now we can write some logic in here so if uh, if the action ID equals editor info dot IME action search and then do or I can just copy this line and we're gonna have a couple more uh, actually next one's gonna be a key event so this one will be IME action done or we'll have key event uh, I just have it called event so event dot get action equals key event dot action down and we copy this line and this one's gonna be action enter get action get key code get key get key code and then key event key code enter that's what we want so uh, this is how you override the return button on the keyboard so like literally when the keyboard's up that bot in the bottom right hand corner the users can press that 
that uh, return button, but here I'm overriding it so that if they press it, it will actually execute whatever's inside this piece of code here. So uh, this is a good place to stop. Uh, in the next one, we'll start building our retrofit query to the Elasticsearch server inside of our on editor action listener right here. So I'll see you guys in the next video.